Hey there beautiful teachers, I'm Nicola from Colourful Keys and Vibrant Music Teaching and in this video we're talking about how we work with those students who get defensive when we try to correct them. How can we work with them, how can we teach them if we can't tell them what they're doing wrong? Let's start this video with a little bit of a compassion check. Why are these students reacting in this way? Why are they telling us they played the right note when they didn't? Or refusing to correct something that we know they're doing the wrong way? In most cases, probably all, this usually comes from insecurity. It comes from some belief within them that they can't do it right. Now I know it often comes across as if they think they already know it all, but a lot of the times that's just a defense mechanism. That's just saying, yeah, 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 I can do it because you're afraid that you can't. You're afraid that you're not musical. I find this to be even more common with students who are neurodivergent. In my guess, my guesstimation is that this is because of not just their actual diagnosis, but what that means for their school life. Because all day they're being told that they're wrong, that they're not getting it. They're having people saying, of course, or obviously it's this, when to them it doesn't seem obvious at all in certain circumstances or they're just being told that they're not doing the whole school thing right. And so they come to us with that baggage. For whatever reason that the students have that baggage, whether they're neurodivergent or just have certain experiences or certain ideas in their head about what it means to play piano, we need to work with the student that we have in front of us. For me, working with the student we have in front of us means avoiding corrections as much as possible. Now I know the instinct might be, no, they need to learn to deal with corrections. This is just a part of life. They will in time. But what we need to do first is avoid them as much as possible so that they don't experience the piano lesson as this environment where people are constantly telling them they're wrong because then they're just gonna quit. Piano is usually optional, right? So we need to avoid those corrections as much as possible. Now, how do we do that? The first way is really good teaching. And I'm not saying that to say you're a bad teacher right now. I don't think you are. I absolutely don't believe that. But I do believe that sometimes we can be just in the moment, we can make a lazy decision. We can open up a book and say, have a go at that without structuring the learning. And for these students, we need to be extra careful that we structure the learning, that we come up with steps for them to do so that they always are completely capable of coming up with the right answer the first time. That might mean clapping out a piece before we play it, maybe even clapping the rhythm before we even look at it so that they've already experienced it. Maybe it means listening to the piece and getting used to the sound of it without having the music in front of us. Maybe it means singing it before we play it, working on one hand at a time, working from the end and doing one measure or bar in reverse backwards. We can structure the learning in different ways. But what we should be asking ourselves is, what's the smallest step I can give this student as the next step that's gonna lead them towards playing this piece the way that I want them to play it? The other thing with these students in terms of avoiding corrections often, not always, is avoiding performing their pieces for them. We often demonstrate pieces because we want to show a student how cool the music is that they're about to learn, or because we want them to have an example of what it's supposed to sound like, or they're going to learn a rope piece and we want to show them the whole thing before we break it down. More often than not with these students, if we show them the whole thing, they will think they're supposed to be able to do that right now. No matter how much we say, this is what it'll look like in a few weeks, they think I should be able to do that now. I'm failing if I can't play it like that. And so I tend to take the demonstration before we learn a piece off the table for a little while. Really break it down into the smallest possible steps. Now, even with those small steps, there's going to be some cases, of course, where the student learns something the wrong way. They practice something with a wrong note or a wrong rhythm and we have to fix it somehow. See if you can fix it without telling them what they did wrong. See if you can play alongside them this often works better with rhythms than with notes. So if they're just playing the rhythm slightly off, if you just play in unison with them a lot of times and even let them get it a bit wrong, but just don't say anything and repeat it, they'll gradually conform to your rhythm in a lot of cases. Or you can have them record themselves and listen back and see if they can spot anything they could do better. Now, when you do have to give those corrections, it will still happen. 
We're just trying to minimize them. When you do, avoid the butts. This tip really comes from Nick Ambrosino, who wrote a couple of great books called Coffee with Ray and Lessons with Matt. Fantastic little teaching books, very quick, easy reads and wonderful lessons inside. One of the things he talks about is that word but, which negates everything that came before it. So we have the best of intentions of giving our students lots of positive reinforcement about their piece and then just one thing they did wrong or could do better. But we phrase it like this. Great use of dynamics. I love that you got all the rhythms right, but there's an F sharp in bar four that you missed. So let's just fix that one. The but makes the rest of the thing that came before it just disappear. It's all of this happened, but this more important thing was missed. That's what it ends up coming across as. So the magic phrase that Nick Ambrosino shares is, and now you're ready to. Try replacing but with, and now you're ready to, and see if you can transform how these students think about the learning process. It comes in waves and stages. It's not about getting everything in one go. It's now we're ready to add this. Now we're ready to add that. More than any of this though, what you need to do with these students is develop your relationship with them over time and be patient. If they learn that you value them as a person, that they're important to you, that you value their opinions, and that your piano environment is a safe space where they might make mistakes sometimes, but that's all part of the process. If they learn it through actions over time, rather than you just teaching them that as a lesson, they will come to trust you and be able to accept those corrections. It might take a few years, but it will be worth it. Let me know your experience with students who get defensive about corrections and any other questions you might have in the comments.